My name is Megan Kettles and we're here at the Brooks Ivernick Treatment Center and this morning we're going to show you the setup of the HAL device on one of our patients who's receiving the treatment. So this is our daily training log where we write down each walking bout and um, the different settings that we're using for the patients. So there's a lot of different settings as you can see. Um, this is all for one bout. Um, this is a blank one for today and then these are some of the settings from previous sessions so it helps us record what we're doing and what we're working on um, from day to day with the patient so we can keep track. So now I'm just going to be getting the sensors on for um, Maverick for to attach the leads to the robot so that it can read the signals that his body's generating. The robot uses um, these monitoring electrodes to pick up any residual signals that a person has. Um, after a neurological injury, particularly a spinal cord injury, it uses those signals and it reads them to initiate the movement with the robot. So everything that is moving on how in a certain mode is fully driven by what the patient has going on um, internally and by their signals. So these are the leads that hook up to the electrodes. Now, we can start by putting the suit on. The Maverick's very helpful. I've experienced in how it goes on. Um, and Maverick's putting on his harness, so the robot has to be used as a body weight support harness for everyone. Start by putting his feet in. And the shoes have ground reaction sensors in them so it can sense weight shift um, while a person's walking. That helps cue things as well when they're in certain modes in the robot. And there's cuffs and straps for the lower leg and the thigh. The only other thing is since this isn't Maverick's initial fitting, so all the joints and everything are already set to him. So it's adjustable at the hips in two places, um, at the knee, and at the ankle, and the foot in multiple places to help conform it to a person's specific body shape and size um, and the different angles that their legs might make. Alright, so just putting the battery in. Take back the suit. I'm gonna turn it on just so it has a couple of minutes to warm up while we get everything else set. Can lean back. This is the battery um, that I put in to turn everything on and there's the main power switch over here. This is our remote that we use to read the different signals um, and help and control the um, robot to get it to be the right settings for what he's doing. Ready to go. <laughs> Right now we're in um, a walk mode, so um, the robot's still reading Maverick signals to initiate the movements, but it's going in a pattern to also help swing and get the legs moving in a natural walking pattern, so based off of his signals. Right now we have Maverick's hips in what's called CVC, which is cybernetic voluntary control, um, which is the 
main thing with Hal um, that we're really working on. And then his knees are in CAC, so that's more that's cybernetic automatic control. It's relying on the signals from the hips, and the knees are in a more automatic mode. Um, so that's one of the things that we've been working on is getting Maverick. Um, his hips are getting really well trained um, as far as the signals go to be able to do what they need to do when they need to do it. Um, and his knees are what we're kind of moving down to and targeting. Um, so right now we're at 0.6 miles per hour. Um, I'm also looking at not just the stepping, but the signals up here. It tells me where the timing is with which movement on each joint during the uh, walking cycle. So I'm looking at that to see if there's something that I need to adjust on our controls to help it be more natural or um, easier or to emphasize whether he needs to flex his hip more um, or less um, to kind of emphasize the things that we're really working on. So the cameras, we've got one in the front so that he can have a, a front view. Um, and see, that's in particularly important for weight shift. Um, and just to kind of keep a sense of where their body is. So particularly um, when someone doesn't have sensation, having that visual feedback is really important for them to be able to make corrections to their step or their posture that they may not be able to feel. And then we have the side view camera um, that we also see that's particularly important for um, step length um, and also posture. So to help, again, make those corrections. So we went from, when we increased speed to 0.8, we went from a walk 4, so that's a different walk mode, to a walk 5. So it makes a difference as far as how quickly they're able to initiate the swing so and initiate that step. All right, you ready to take a break? I can see in the pattern on the screen um, when his signals are starting to fatigue um, and getting it's a little bit more erratic versus in that good timing that we want. Um, we want to make sure we take a break um, and let them recover. So it varies from person to person and activity to activity. One of the other big differences with HAL versus any other exoskeleton is that um, it can work on isolated movements so someone can be sitting or standing and working on one movement at a time so um, what we're going to work on in a couple minutes is Maverick working on lifting his leg up so really just working on those hip flexors to really isolate those and those are particularly important to be able to control the robot and the movement um, so those are really important with this since everything is based off of his signals so him learning to be able to control those signals and movements is a huge key in the use of this. My name is Bob McIver I'm the director of the Brooks Cybernic Treatment Center. I'm also a physical therapist that's been working for Brooks for eight years now. Brooks created the Cybernic Treatment Center in order to deliver the HAL interventions to patients with spinal cord injuries. Uh, we were able to do that after Cyberdyne got their FDA clearance in 2017 and it's a new revolutionary technology. It's the only technology that has actually shown to improve a patient's ability to functionally walk. It's very cutting edge. Uh, it's an exoskeleton that works based off of the human nervous system and that's how it's, how it's driven and how the walking sessions are driven, which is very different from the passive systems, which are motion or positional um, driven. So as a patient gets into a certain position with the exoskeleton on a passive system, that produces a full and complete step. With HAL, what was found with it is it's the nervous system. So it's voluntary small motions that the patient has to drive in order to activate the robot. So it's a biofeedback system in combination with an exoskeletal system. So three years ago we had interest with it and so Dr. Paris, Dr. Tanuzi, myself and Michael Spiegel uh, were lucky enough to be able to take a trip to Germany to see the only operational facility in the world. We were able to go there, speak with their physicians, see their facilities and see the operations and we were wowed by the entire experience. And we, we wanted to pursue that, that Brooks would be the first one to introduce Cyberdyne to the United States. 
right. um, so fast forward three years in December 2017 Cyberdyne received his FDA clearance for spinal cord for application for how for spinal cord injured patients and hence started our Brooks Cybernic Treatment Center it's been a whirlwind of a trip a whirlwind of an adventure and a great learning experience for all of, all of us at Brooks is we went and learned in Japan how to operate the robot learned marketing strategies and had to come up with the whole strategy how to create our first international partnership in order to bring the HAL device and Cyberdyne to the United States and to Brooks itself it's been a fun experience and the patients that have gone through it so far have had great results and lots of results we didn't ex we didn't expect to see uh, so we look forward to seeing many, many more patients here and seeing how, how far everybody can progress and how we can get people back to their functional goals. Yeah.